What's up guys, E-Drone here, and today we're going to be setting up my Project Blue Falcon JC Diatone build with Flight 1. Stay tuned. Guys, when I first announced that I was going to be doing this build this uh, memorial frame for Project Blue Falcon. Make sure you check out JC's channel up here. There was a lot of new firsts for me with this build. This was the first diatone frame I'd ever built for one. And for two, something I'm really excited about was I'm gonna be using the Flight One uh, software, the Flight One hardware, and I'm gonna be setting this up with the Flight One configurator, which is completely different than Betaflight that I'm traditionally used to. And I wanted to kind of document my progress in all this and show you how I've been experiencing this as a first time user. Um, I was able to find out uh, a lot of good information from a couple of really good friends of mine. Um, Chris Justice, MD95TSI, make sure you check out his channel. And my good buddy uh, Squish, make sure you check out his channel here. I'll put it up here in the corner. Um, they have given me a lot of useful, helpful information about Flight 1 that I want to relay to you guys and hopefully make it easier for you to get set up with Flight 1. First thing we're going to do is we're going to have to set the ESC. We're going to go ahead and set that up with a couple of settings as recommended with the Afterburner Flight 1 ESC. Make sure you have the correct pads bridged for your BO Heli 32 or your BO Heli S in the diagram here. Okay, so in order to get the uh, BL Heli settings set up for uh, this Afterburner ESC, we're going to have to flash Betaflight, that's right, Betaflight to this flight controller. In order to flash the Betaflight firmware on this flight controller, we're going to have to jump the boot pads right there to put this into DFU mode to be able to flash the firmware. Okay, in order to jump the pads, we're going to use our tweezers and put them in the two holes here on the flight controller for the boot. Plug in the USB while the tweezers are in the pads. Go ahead and plug in our USB. Okay, now that we've jumped the pads, you can see now we're in DFU mode. Come over here to Firmware Flasher. We'll go ahead and choose the correct target, which is the Revolt OSD. And I actually think this is really uh, cool that we're able to flash Betaflight onto a Flight 1 flight controller. So, pretty cool. There it is, Revolt OSD. We're going to go ahead and just do 410. We're going to load the firmware online. Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and flash the firmware. And the reason we need to do this is so that we can go ahead and set it up in the BL Heli then we'll flash it back to Flight 1 using the Flight 1 configurator. Go ahead and flash. I guess the reason that you can't use Flight 1 software and connect to BL Heli is, is different drivers. They don't communicate. Now that we have uh, got the Betaflight firmware on here, now we can go ahead and connect to the BL Heli. Uh, make sure you have the correct interface selected. I'm going to do the Betaflight Clean Flight here. You're going to click on Connect. Now, once you click on Connect, we can go ahead and plug in our battery. We're going to click Read Setup. So, Flight 1 gives us some settings that we need to set up. And I'll pop that up on the screen so you can see but we need to set the PWM frequency to 48 kilohertz so I'm gonna just go ahead and right click on ESC1 we're gonna do 48 kilohertz and then we also need to set the motor timing set this to auto okay we're going to do right setup. OK, 
Okay, now we need to go to the Flight 1 Download Configurator and click on the correct version for your PC operating system. And once you go ahead and click on it, you're going to go ahead and download the zip file to your PC. And then you're going to go ahead and extract it. Once it's extracted, you can create a desktop icon to make it easier to find later on. And I'll put the link to the Flight 1 Configurator in the description so make sure you check that out open up the flight one configurator we're going to go ahead and plug in our usb now you see it says that you are using betaflight firmware to install flight one click the button below so we're going to click flash flight one firmware and you can see that the 1.2.94 is the newest stable version of revolt firmware so I'm going to go ahead and just put that on here and hit confirm. Okay, it is erasing the chip. Now this is the part where you don't want to disconnect it or power it off or power it on. Just let it finish. Okay, it is now reading the flight controller. And it says here that it looks like the board's never been set up, so we're going to run through the initial steps. So let's go ahead and click continue. We're going to choose the receiver. So for this particular, uh, we're using the crossfire. So we'll go ahead and select crossfire. Hit next. Choose your ESCs. We are using a BL Heli 32, which is the Flight 1 Afterburner ESC. Go ahead and click on that. We'll hit next. It's going to ask us if we want to run reversed props. Uh, I typically run reversed props, so I'm going to go ahead and select yes, but there's a little video here we can watch. It's about 32 seconds. Let's go ahead and watch that. When connecting your receiver to the Revolt, you want to connect it to the TX1 pad. You also want to make sure you connect the power to the VCC and the ground to the ground. You then want to jumper normal NOR if it's uninverted and you want to jumper INV if it's inverted for example using the Futaba receiver. You also want to jumper the proper voltage here and here for what your receiver uses. Most likely it's 5 volts but some spectrums use 3.3 .3 volts. And we talked about this in the install video, so make sure you check that out. Select yes for running reverse props. It's going to go ahead and get it all figured out here for us. Congratulations. We'll go ahead and set up the flight controller here. We're going to do an order. Uh, this quad is going to be mainly for racing, so we'll go ahead and hit next. And it's setting everything up for a a racing quadcopter, very innovative here. And we're going to select the quad size. This is a five inch quad, so we'll hit next. Very easy. Okay, place your quad flat. Okay, it's flat. Place your quad on its nose. We'll hit next. Okay, the orientation is done. That simple. So we're going to go ahead and detect the receiver. So we're going to launch the wizard here for the receiver. Okay, turn on your radio and make sure your radio is bound to the receiver and transmitting at least 10 feet away from the RX. So let me go ahead and grab my transmitter. Okay, I already have my uh, transmitter bound to the receiver. And if you don't know how to do that, I'm going to pop a video up in the right hand corner. Go ahead and check that out on how to bind to your crossfire. Um, micro transmitter to the micro crossfire nano and I'll show you how to do that. Next. Okay, we are scanning. Saving. Getting the new data here. Perfect. Automatic radio detection succeeded. We recommend to run the setup radio wizard next. Okay, that's what we'll do then. Go ahead and click that. So we're going to go ahead and hit next. Move the sticks and complete circles a few times. After that, place the throttle at idle and keep yaw pitch and roll centered. 
So we're going to go ahead and circle the sticks. And then we're going to place the throttle at idle. And that's centered. And then we're going to hit next. Let me do that one more time just to be safe. And we'll go ahead and hit put the throttle at idle and hit next. Set the throttle to the top. Push yaw stick to the right. Push pitch stick to the top. Roll stick to the right. Please set your arming switch to the disarmed position and hit next, which mine already is. So we'll go ahead and hit next. Please set your arming switch to the arm position. Battery critical. Okay. Gonna go ahead and hit next. What's wonderful is it's detecting all the auxiliary channels on the radio through the receiver. And that's it. Radio setup has been completed. That was quick and painless. Go ahead and click done. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and calibrate the ESCs. Calibrate your ESCs before you configure your motors. So we're going to do this first. So it's going to ask us that I have removed the props and disconnected the battery, which I have. So we'll go ahead and check that box there for safety. Go ahead and click next. Plug in the battery and wait until the ESCs are finished with the calibration, then press OK. So we'll go ahead and plug in the battery here. Okay, we got the calibration tones, then press OK. If you have heard the proper tones from the motors and you have successfully completed the motor calibration. Okay, if you have not, please run the motor calibration wizard again. Go ahead and click done because I heard the right tones. Okay, now we need to do the fixed motor direction and idle. So we got to go ahead and launch this. Okay, let's go ahead and remove the battery. I'm going to go ahead and select I have removed the battery and the prop. I have removed the props and connected the battery. We need to connect the battery. Okay, we're going to go ahead and hit next. Oh, look at that. Are all the motors spinning? Yes. Which motor is spinning now? That would be the rear left. And we're going to hit next. Which motor is spinning now? Front left. Motor spinning now. Rear right. Okay, we're entering D shot mode. Now we're going to be checking our motor direction. Now I'm going to be running reverse props, so. See what we have here. Are all motors spinning in right direction? Not hard to see. That one's spinning right. That one's not. That one is. And that one's not. So are all motors spinning in the right direction? No. So we need to change motor 2 to reversed. Let's try 
try it again. Okay, so this should be spinning out, which it is. This should be spinning out, which it is. This should be spinning counterclockwise. And it is, and this should be spinning clockwise. And it's not. So, we need to reverse motor four and start motors again. Very innovative how it just kind of does its own thing and starts the motors. Okay, we have both of these. This one's going counterclockwise, which is correct. This one's going clockwise, which is correct. This should be going clockwise, and this should be counterclockwise. Perfect. So we're going to hit yes. Okay, it's doing a little bit of a beep and a chirp, and that is all done. So the motor direction is all done, all set up right here through the configurator. Very interesting. So now we have all these completed, and we have uh, some setup mode we can do for the switches. So we'll, we'll go ahead and set that up now. This shouldn't be too bad. Everything else has been really good. Okay, so here's our setup modes. We have level. Let's see if it'll give us a description is like angle mode, it goes back to level. The angle of the quad is limited, more for beginners. So let's go ahead and set up angle mode on a switch here. Okay, we're gonna set the switch to the off position for angle mode, so. Battery critical, acro, battery critical, battery critical, battery critical. And hit next. Battery critical, battery critical, angle mode, battery critical, battery critical. Okay, so it's setting that switch up for angle mode, channel 6. Uh, and as you can see, it turns uh, green when it's engaged and red when it's not. Okay, uh, Cupa, reverse motors and automatically flips over on upside down quad. We definitely want that. That's going to be like your turtle mode. So we're going to switch that to off, which it is. Hit next. Switch it to on. All right, so we have turtle mode set up here, or Cupa, whatever that means. And I think that's pretty much it for our switches. I don't really have a lot of switches set up on here. We have a diagnostic here that we can test the radio data. Okay, here's the configuration here. Okay, we got the reverse props on, we got the double arm. Okay. We have our voltage set up here, radio settings, crossfire. We have our BL heli settings here, PID tuning tab here. And now we are in the PID tuning tab. Default five inch PID tune from developers is what we are using, we are on default. So we're gonna start out using the default and see how it feels. And uh, then we can play around and change, we can you know, change to the schizo, to the blackbird, we can change all these different tunes here. And we can just explore and see, you know, what feels good. There's load custom defaults from other pilots. There's custom, so you can do custom PID tunes. Uh, here's our ready for use filters. We have it on the default. We have low, medium, and high, predictive. New predictive algorithm has a unique feel that's great for freestyle quads and heavier quads. So very interesting here. Here's our ready for use rates. So where are we now on our rates? Doesn't look like we have our rates set up at all here. So let's go ahead and set up default rates. That was easy. One click and that's it. So it looks like we're going to be able to change you know, these rates and these PID tunes 
very easily. You know, a couple clicks once we hook it up to the configurator, and we can change and, and feel what the quad feels like. So very nice experience for me. Um, I'm definitely digging. Uh, we're gonna save and continue. I love that it recognizes that you didn't save. So rather than exit out here and have to remember, forget that you made a change and it doesn't save it, it actually reminds you when you go to the next tab and it says, hey, you made changes, do you wanna save them? So that's very good that it reminds you of that. Uh, here's our ESC, you can change your motor direction. Here's your ESC data if you wanna use that for telemetry. You have your black box logging. You can download that for your flight log. Here's a console here. And that's going to do it for this video, guys. My experience with the Flight One Configurator has been amazing. In the next video, we'll be taking this uh, Project JC Diatone build for the maiden flight. I can't wait to see how it's going to feel. Till next time, guys. Thanks for watching. E Drone out.